the mail. They sent Don Drysdale and I down into the clubhouse to do the interview. They had already taken the champagne and everything over to their clubhouse and started popping it. Start the ninth with uh, base hit, Buckner gets a hit up the middle, and then Baylor came up with one out. The Angels two outs away, and of course they could get both of them on a ground ball. The left field, left center, and Keith Pettis goes back, leaps, and he's gone. And it's five to four. Drysdale and I looked at each other and said, they're not going to blow this thing, are they? Johnny Moore throws in the bullpen, and Gary Lucas as well. Dwight Evans comes up, pops up to third. The sensei calls. One out to go. I'm kind of geared up for the last guy. Last guy happened to be Rich Gedman. Gedman. A shot to right for a homer. A shot to left center for a double. A sing and single to right. And Marcel Laxman goes to the mound. And goes to the bullpen. Bob Boone and I converged rather rapidly. So Latchman said, what are you doing? I didn't like the decision. I thought Mike was so fine, but that was that was Gene's decision. And this is exactly the way Gene Lawrence was playing under any circumstance. Gary Lucas is going to come in, and I'm thinking, uh, okay, do I show any emotion here? Do I kind of fight for this? And I thought, well, you know, I, they've been right all year. Lucas had faced Gedman twice before in the past and struck him out both times. Unfortunately, he hit him in the neck with a change up on the first ball pitch. Now Gene has to go make another move. Donnie was experiencing shoulder problems at that time. And the drama keeps building. Here comes Moore. And when I saw Donnie Moore, I went, oh, no. And I think everybody on our team went, oh, no, because he physically couldn't do what he normally could do. Moore comes in and actually pitched Henderson pretty tough. One and two. My field glasses were focused on Gene Moore because I wanted to see his face when he finally won a pennant and went to the World Series. That's how much I thought of the man. Gene had his foot in the dugout step and Reggie had his arm around him. I could hear what he was saying. Finally, we did it. We're going to the World Series. And here's Mr. October, and here's the man who's never seen it. And it's as, almost as though Reggie's going to carry Gene Mock up and take him onto the field and deposit him into October. I stood next to him that day because I wanted to feel his joy. I wanted to be a part of it. I, was, I wanted to participate in the human side of it. He throws him a change up next pitch. I, and about halfway on his hand, my wife can tell you, I came right out of my seat and said, oh, no, don't throw the bang. So left field. That look on his face when that ball went out was the look of such inevitability that I felt in a lot of ways that it was, it pained me to watch it. If you lose to the Red Sox, you just know it's not meant to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because eventually they're going to give it up anyway. Of course, Boston did give it up. After tying the game in the ninth, the Angels loaded the bases with one out. And the census and Rich coming up, two pretty good hitters. But all the census had to do was hit a fly ball. Popped up, shallow right field. Will Bunger's tagging, but it's just a shallow fly ball. Evans makes the catch, and they can't take the chance. And then Bobby Gritch hit a uh, broken bat liner back to uh, Steve Crawford to end that inning. In the 11th inning, the Red Sox scored in a sacrifice fly by Henderson and held on to win 7-6. Popped up. Here comes Stapleton. Next play to Boston. Though California still had a 3-2 series advantage, the emotional edge now belonged to Boston, and the Angels never recovered. The Red Sox closed them out with two more wins. I think most guys were just kind of in disbelief at that time. We weren't really talking to each other, but... Uh, it was a bad feeling, that's for sure. But when you have the opportunity of one out, one pitch, to jump to the World Series, and all of a sudden it didn't happen, there's an emptiness in you that lasts a long time. You can't be at one strike away from the World Series and having everything going and just and feel like somebody just, you know, 
reached in and grabbed all your guts out of you, you know, and you're just empty. Gene is sitting in his office insisting that bringing in Lucas was a movie he'd made time and again, that if Gedman had hit a double off uh, wit or had homered off wit, he couldn't have lived with himself. Tragically, it was Donnie Moore who could not live with himself. Many friends and teammates believe Game 5 began Moore's emotional slide toward that July day in 1989 when he took his own life. One thing that hurt him a lot was that even though he gave the pitch to Henderson, every time he came in, the fans booed him. And that really uh, hurt me. I'd come to a game, and, um, and I remember uh, being in the stands, you know, <clears throat> a lot of what Donnie had gone through was media driven when in reality Donnie had some other problems had some other demons he was dealing with I think Gene Mock felt a lot of empathy for Donnie Moore I think he felt so badly about it that he never talked about it Donnie was not the most stable guy in the world but I never dreamed that anything like that would ever happen that was distressing very sad.